Hello everyone and welcome. Koenigsegg has unveiled the CC850 and with it they've basically reinvented the manual transmission. It's extremely cool so in this video we're going to be explaining how it works. Okay, so I have two main drawings here on the whiteboard. The first one is a traditional manual transmission with two speeds just so we can see how it operates. And then the other is Koenigsegg's new transmission and this is based on the light speed transmission which was used in the Koenigsegg Jesco. So this new transmission Koenigsegg is calling ESS and the first thing I want to do is break down mechanically how does this differ from a traditional manual transmission. So we start with our engine of course and then we work our way to driving our wheels. So both of these have an engine. Great. Uh, unfortunately, the manual's got a V6. Koenigsegg's got the V8. Uh, that's a nice touch there. The flywheel, a manual transmission, of course, using a flywheel, which would be here in purple, connected with the clutch, the pressure plate. Uh, the Koenigsegg system does not use a flywheel, so you're just going straight from the engine into the transmission and spinning gears. A uh, manual transmission has a single clutch uh, right there, and that is your disconnect between the engine and your driven wheels. With Koenigsegg, you have seven of these clutches. So anywhere I've drawn this little red, uh, that is a clutch within this transmission. So all seven of those being points where you can use to disconnect between the engine and the driven wheels. Uh, as far as how many forward speeds do you have? Traditional manual transmissions today, by today's standards, you're gonna probably have six to seven forward speeds plus a reverse. With Koenigsegg's ESS, when you're in manual mode, you have six forward gears. And then when you're in automatic mode, you actually have nine forward gears. So you're choosing between automatic and manual. And when you're in manual, you do have a reduced number of gears. So you don't have this super clunky shifter with you know nine gears that you're selecting between. So we'll get into how it switches between the six and nine gears there, but the point being that mechanically, they both do have gear selectors. They're just different in how they operate. So with the manual, you're going to use that gear shift. That's going to move a shift fork, push a collar into synchros, which will engage it with the selected gear. You don't have that with the Koenigsegg transmissions. So you don't have the fork or the collars or the synchros. You're just using clutches in order to switch gears. Okay, so we understand mechanically how these transmissions differ, but how does Koenigsegg's transmission actually work? So we have our power coming from our engine and that engine power needs to make its way to the driven wheels. In order to get there, first it has to choose between three of these gears. So each of these gears in blue is on a bearing and they're connected to a clutch and that clutch connects them to this shaft right here. So. As that power comes in, one of these clutches engages here, so you've got three options here, and then that sends power to one of these three gears here, which also each have their own individual clutch. So you choose one clutch here, you choose one clutch here, and that connects a pathway for that torque to make it to the driven wheels. So you have three up here, three down here, three times three, that gives you nine forward speeds. Now with manual mode, again, they're going to limit how many forward speeds you actually have so you don't have this clunky shifter. And so in order to do so, you're just selecting six of those nine available speeds. So when you're in this normal driving mode, you can see here what Koenigsegg chooses. Second gear is actually first gear uh, with manual mode. And then fourth gear in automatic is actually second gear in manual mode. And then they just cascade down from there. Uh, so they do slightly differ in their gear ratios uh, because with that manual mode, you're gonna be starting in a second gear. Okay, so to recap how the automatic mode works before we get into the operation of the manual mode, for any of our nine gears, we need to use two clutches. So for example, for gear one, we're using clutches one and four. So this clutch is engaged and this clutch is engaged, and that means our power flow goes through that one, goes through that one, and out to our driven wheels. Now to switch to second gear, we're now using clutches one and five. So four is going to open up, five is going to engage, and then we have our power flow come through one, go through five, and that is our second gear. And then for third, you use one and six, and so on through your nine gears. Okay, so now let's understand how the manual mode works, and first we'll start with the gear selector. So if you take the gear selector and you move it all the way over and then down to the right, that's gonna put it in drive and it's gonna operate like a automatic transmission and it'll just go through these nine gears as it sees fit. If you take that selector and then put it in to this manual selection region where you have this gated shifter of one through six, then it puts it over into manual mode. And then your gears suddenly switch over from the nine available options to these six available options. Again, each correlating with two clutches in order to have that gear ratio. 
So you have your one, two, three, four, five, and six correlating with two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so here's where the real beauty of this transmission comes in. How does it operate in manual mode? So let's say, for example, we want to start accelerating in first gear. So we need to put the car in first gear. Well, just like a traditional manual transmission, in order to put it in gear, the first thing you have to do is press in that clutch pedal. So you press in the clutch pedal with your left foot, and then you go to select first gear with the gear selector. Now, when you push in that clutch pedal, all of these clutches are open. There's no connection between the engine and the driven wheel. So that clutch pedal says, hey, everything's open. When you then select first gear, all right, remember first gear is second uh, in the automatic, so we're using clutches one and five. So it knows now, okay, these are the clutches that we're going to be using for the current gear we're in, which is our manual first. So what it does is, as you select that first gear with the shifter, it's gonna go ahead and already engage one of those clutches. So let's say clutch one is already engaging and it's position sensitive. So it's how far you push in uh, that selector is how much engagement you have with the clutch. So once it's fully in place, that first clutch is fully engaged. Now you just have one clutch that's open uh, and needs to be closed in order for that power to make it all the way to the wheels. So again, it's position sensitive. It's important as you're selecting it, there's a monitor of where is that selector and that's choosing how much do we engage the first of the two clutches. Then, remember our left foot still has that clutch pedal down. We release our left foot and our left foot is perfectly controlling how much engagement you have with this clutch right here. So this is already engaged as our left foot comes out, this engages and then you have power flow in your first gear, which again is your automatic second and it goes to your driven wheels. Super cool. Okay, so what happens when we now want to switch from first to second gear? So when we're in first gear, we're using clutches one and five. We now want to switch to second gear, which is using clutches two and four. So we're using these two clutches right here, and we want to switch to these two right here. So the first thing, of course, that you're always doing is pushing in the clutch pedal, right? So we have one and five engaged. As we press in that clutch pedal, the clutch pedal will disengage clutch five. So now all of these are open. The only clutch engaged is one. As we take that gear selector and move it from one to two, we're gonna deselect one, so we're gonna disengage this clutch, and we're going to engage two. So that's what's happening. As that shifter goes from one to two, we switch between this clutch to this clutch. Then our clutch pedal now starts to only control clutch four. And so that's where our engagement with our foot comes in. As we release the clutch pedal, now that clutch pedal controls the engagement here, and so you engage that, you get in second gear, and your power flow goes through second, and then you have that gear ratio selected. So you just use that same methodology with each of these corresponding clutches as you work through. The gear selector works for one of those clutches, and then the clutch pedal uh, finishes off that motion, and so the engagement between the engine and the driven wheels is ultimately controlled all by that clutch pedal. Now a couple of interesting comments on how this gear selector works. So because you have this kind of electronic control of what gears you're going to be using, you can actually change what each of these gears represent by using a, a different mode. So for example, in normal mode, first gear will be second gear uh, of the automatic. In track mode, you don't really need these really low speed ratios once you get out there on the track. You're gonna be using the higher gears uh, once you actually start moving. So for track mode, it'll start out with second second gear being first, but then first will actually become third gear once you get going. So once you, you know, you take off, you start driving around, you go into second gear, third gear in the manual, if you were to come back to first gear, it is no longer automatic's equivalent of second gear, it is now third gear. So then you have this really tight ratio uh, with you know that perfect little drop in RPM for each uh, gear shift because you're keeping all of your ratios you know, within that compact range right there. Three through eight equals one through six when you're on the track. You change that when you're driving on the road, so one is always equal to two. And you have that flexibility because this is essentially shift by wire uh, and you're electronically controlling based on the shifter's position how much you engage the clutch. 
Now you might reasonably wondering, well, wait a minute, how do I know if I need to use the clutch for reverse or not? And it's basically built into the logic of the car. If you come from automatic mode, you were in drive and you put it over into reverse, it's just gonna stay automatic because it saw that you came from an automatic driving mode. If you come from first gear over here in manual mode and then you stick it into reverse, it knows, hey, you were using that manual mode, so the clutch pedal is then going to operate this reverse clutch here. And so that's where you're gonna use the clutch pedal for reverse gear, but if you put it down into drive, then to reverse, you don't actually use the clutch pedal, it controls that automatically. Okay, so now that we understand how it works, I wanna talk about the differences versus a traditional manual transmission, starting with the clutch. So of course, the clutch in this scenario is by wire, and you know, a couple enthusiasts out there are gonna get enraged, throw everything in the air and say, none of this makes any sense, I hate it. But that's silly, because although it's clutch by wire, it's perfectly controlling the engagement of the clutch. So yes, the clutch pedal itself is not moving a hydraulic fluid. However, it is perfectly matching how much you engage that clutch pack. And that's ultimately what is important. Are you actually controlling a clutch pack or are you not? And with this Koenigsegg transmission, that's exactly what you're doing with that pedal. And so you say, okay, well, what do I feel through that pedal? Well, what they do is they just take, you know, a force versus travel curve. So how much feedback, how much resistance do I get depending on how much I push in the clutch pedal on, you know, a previous Koenigsegg manual transmission. And they just duplicate that force, uh, that feel, in the clutch pedal. So it's going to feel, you know, very similar to a traditional clutch pedal. You're just not actually moving a hydraulic fluid with that pedal. All that hydraulic actuation is done electronically, but you're controlling, you know, perfectly synced uh, with where that pedal is, uh, how much you engage that clutch. I think it's also worth mentioning that a lot of the feel in driving a manual transmission doesn't necessarily come through that clutch pedal. You know you mess up, uh, for example, if you let the clutch out too quickly because the engine stalls and you feel that vibration pass through the whole car. Well, you can do the same thing with this transmission. If you let out the clutch way too quickly, the engine will stall and you'll feel those vibrations passing through the car. So it's not like every uh, aspect of feel is passed through that pedal. Some of it passes through the car and you still have that and you can still stall. It acts just like a manual transmission. Okay, now for the shifter, and the shifter is also by wire, uh, and I think, you know, part of the thing here is if you think about a traditional manual transmission, you can kind of think of selecting gears as like an on-off switch. You're either in the gear or you're not, right? And there is a feel associated with it, right? Because you're moving that shift fork, you're moving a collar, and you're putting it into gear uh, with those synchros. But there is, there's really just, are you in gear or are you not in gear? And with this, you're still adding an element of control with that shifter. So yes, the feel itself is designed in how it feels, but you are actually controlling something. You're controlling the engagement of that first clutch. So there is a role of that shifter uh, and you are given the control rather than computers doing all of it. And I think that's the whole beauty of manual transmissions, right? It's that you are actually controlling how the shift is occurring. All right, let's get into advantages and disadvantages. And of course, the huge advantage here is the, really that you have the best of both worlds. You've got a manual, you've got an automatic. If you're sitting in traffic and you don't wanna deal with the manual, hey, put it in automatic mode and don't worry about it. If you're going on a long road trip and you wanna switch drivers with your friend, but your friend doesn't know how to drive manual, hey, no worries, put it in automatic mode. I don't know if you're gonna do that with the Koenigsegg, but you know, you get it, you can, the option is there. You have more gears here with the Koenigsegg, so you've got nine total choices, and from that, you have that flexibility with the manual mode of choosing between those nine gears, so that's more than most manual transmissions have. You can also put in aspects of control, like preventing a money shift, where if the engine RPM would go too high based on the gear that you selected, it just won't engage the clutch. It won't say, hey, you're gonna break your engine in 10 no, and I don't know whether or not they do this, but they allow for that control. So some of the silly aspects of you know manual transmissions that you could really damage it, you could take that out if you wanted to. It sounds like they leave in a lot of that authenticity because they allow you to stall, and clearly they could put in a control that says, hey, you're doing something wrong, we're not gonna let you stall. So I think it's cool that they do let you stall the transmission, they do allow for you to make mistakes, but you could tune in uh, this programming that allows for you to prevent catastrophic damage from something like a money ship. 
Also, this transmission is extremely light and compact, and it's actually pretty simple. If you think about all the forks and selectors and collars and synchros and all that that goes into a manual transmission, this is actually really simple. You've just got these seven clutches here that you're dealing with. And Koenigsegg says, I believe that it's actually lighter than their manual transmissions that they've used in the past. So they're saving weight and, uh, you know, in some aspects, complexity, and you still have an automatic and a manual. It's kind of beautiful how that all worked out. Now, it's not all advantages, right? There are some disadvantages. Um, first of all, you know, when you're picking from nine gears and then you're choosing six of them, that could mean that some of your ratio steps could be too extreme, right? Going from two to four, maybe that's too much of a drop off, but that's how it's gonna be uh, for, you know, manual driving around town in normal mode. For track mode, that's not as big of a deal because you're just selecting three through eight, and that basically means you're gonna have these perfect steps for each gear. Uh, but nonetheless, it could be a problem where you know your ratios aren't perfectly matched for the manual transmission and then finally people are going to complain no matter what because these are clutch by wire and these are shift by wire uh, which traditionally isn't done with manual transmissions my counter to that though is that everything today is throttle by wire so all of the manual transmissions that exist out there as production cars they're using throttle by wire and it doesn't matter that it's throttle by wire that doesn't make it good or bad what makes it good or bad is how well synchronized that throttle by wire is with your foot so if your foot's position is always perfectly matched with the throttle position great. No one will care. If you drive a Porsche GT3 around, a modern Porsche GT3 with a manual transmission, you're not going to care about that throttle by wire. It's a beautiful throttle and it's insanely responsive. Uh, if you drive a really trash modern throttle by wire, then you're going to say, hey, that sucks. So it's not that it's throttle by wire that's the problem. The problem is whether or not it's perfectly synchronized. And as long as that throttle pedal and the throttle opening are actually perfectly synchronized, then who cares? It's going to be great. Uh, and that's how I feel honestly about the clutch pedal and the selector in this case I think as long as it is well done and you don't you know perceive these delays between when you ask for something when you get it who cares let it be done because it allows you to have such a cool experience driving this car now there's one more thing that I must go over because I don't like presenting inaccurate information. However, if the goal is education, uh, I think simplification works out a lot. So this drawing right here is a much simplified version of Koenigsegg's transmission. So it's expanded out, it's two dimensional, and it's not an accurate representation of what the transmission actually looks like. I'll put up an image to kind of give a better idea of, of what it would be like, but still again, that's 2D. So you have to keep in mind that you know these gears here aren't going to be way over here it's all going to be compact and these three shafts here aren't going to be like all in a line right it's going to be more like a triangle it's going to be three-dimensional and they're all going to be much closer together that means this reverse gear is not so gigantic and the other big inaccuracy here is how these clutches are labeled, right? So you could theoretically have it work out how, how I've written it here. However, realistically, what's gonna happen is, you know, your first gear might be this and this, your second gear might be this and this, and then your third gear might be this and this, right? It's not gonna be this beautiful, okay, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not gonna be that simple uh, because of how these gear ratios work out. So you can see that this is large, this is large. That means it's gonna be a very high gear ratio. So it's going to be one of the lower gears like one. But this multiplied by this is also very large. So it's not gonna be fourth gear. It's probably gonna be, you know, like second or third, probably third gear. And this multiplied towards this small little gear right here, that's gonna be a higher gear. So I have it labeled as third here. Realistically, that's probably like five or six. Um, so how this is all written out is simplified to make it easy to understand. Uh, realistically, it's gonna be a bit different. And I'll also include what the actual gear ratios are for the automatic mode on the screen. So you can take a look at those if you are curious. If you would like to watch a video purely on the Lightspeed transmission and learn more about this transmission, I have that that you can check out. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.